What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first official The Kanadi Way podcast. My name is Kevin Lezak. I'm Nate Tabor. We're really excited to uh, start this. We've been talking about it for a really long time. Um, what, probably at least two years now, three years? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and we don't have an official setup, you know, a studio or something like that, or even the right equipment yet, but we figured let's just get the ball rolling here. So here we are set up in my house. This is a cabin that I built here in upstate New York. And um, so we're just going to start trying to get some episodes out to you guys. But we're, we want to take the time to introduce who we are, tell you guys a little bit about Kanadi, what it is and what we have planned, what you guys who are obviously new here, because this is a brand new uh, thing that we're starting, what you guys can look forward to and what you guys can expect. So I'll let Nate you take a minute to introduce yourself and say yeah, who you are. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been a hunter for, this is my third season now. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I'm i just, uh, Kevin here actually kind of showed me the ropes my first season and I, I've learned a lot from him. And uh, this is my first season. I feel like I really kind of know what I'm, I'm doing. So, um, you know, we're, we're out there we're, we're hunting almost every day and uh uh you know it's white tail season right now so we're out there chasing deer and yep um and yeah i mean yeah so i've been i've been hunting my entire life there's there's a big difference between nate and i with this i was born into an outdoors family where it goes generation after generation of outdoorsmen yeah. um where my grandfather hunted my father hunted and he taught me and it's just a long line of dads teaching sons how to live off the land. So I've, I've been doing it since before I even should have been doing it. You know, I, <laughs> I had that, I had that, uh, that childhood of, I got a BB gun when I was six and my mom freaked out and you know, she was, why does he have a gun? And my dad, cause he should have one. You know, that was my childhood. Um, going out hunting with him really young age. And then as soon as, uh, you know, I went and took my hunter safety course when, I think in New York, you can take it when you're 12. You, you, 12, right? Yeah, you can take it when you're 12. We got Sam behind the camera over here. <laughs> Producer um, Sam. <laughs> so you can take it when you're 12, but I remember doing so. Uh, my brother is 18 months older than me. So when he went through, I went through with it, but I wasn't allowed to carry an actual firearm during it. I had to carry... Uh, it was like a dowel, a wooden dowel that had like a trigger on it. It just oh, a dummy yeah. gun. And they take you through the field drills where you have to, uh, you get up to a, a road and everyone has to unload and stuff like that or else you fail. And I had to show that I was pretending to unload this wooden dowel. And then when we got to a fence, handing it to the guy in front of you and then stepping over the fence and taking it back from them. And I wasn't able to shoot the clay birds or anything like that. But um, my point being is that I've done this from a very young age and that's the main difference between Nate and I. Um, Nate's very new to um, hunting. And yeah. so um, our friendship has really kind of been founded around that of me mentoring him a little bit with that uh, these last few years. And um, we've always had the, the, the conversation of how, like I just said, my dad taught me everything. You didn't really have that. Right. So a lot of this, I, I've always commended you with if it wasn't for my father and me being born into a family that this is just what we do, I don't know if I would do it. Mm -hmm. And if I did, I mean, I, I would hope that at some point in my life I would come up with, you know, find myself in this, in this lifestyle, but it'd be a lot harder, yeah. way harder. Yeah. Yeah. I always had an appreciation for outdoors. You know, my, my dad taught me a lot. You know, he was a, he was a carpenter. He taught me how to, you know, fix stuff and build stuff and, and, uh, but, you know, he never was much of a hunter and that's cool, you know, but, you know, my mom had some land behind her house growing up and I always really loved being in the woods and that never really went away even until my adult life. I just, I love hiking. I love being out there. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, 2020 happened and, you know, goes without saying it, it, it puts some uncertainty yep. in, in my mind of like, well, what would happen if like things took a turn for the worse? Like, would I be able to feed my family? Would I be able to feed myself? Things like that. That's what kind of started to get my gears turning with, with hunting. And that's a big part of what motivates me with hunting now. You know, I've, I, I just got married <clears throat> a year ago. We got a, had our first baby this year. And a big part of it's just like, I wanna, I wanna have the skills to be able to feed my own family, to go out 
and all kinds of different animals. You know, I want to be, I want to know how to hunt deer. I want to know how to hunt birds and you know, everything in between. So, um, I, I just, every time I go out in the woods is a, is a learning experience and I, I really love it. So last year was your first, well, no, two years ago was your first year. Yeah. Hunting. Yeah. Um, you shot that doe with me Yep. in that cornfield. You shot yeah. a doe and that was your first, your first deer. Yeah. The first year was just like me tagging along with you for the most part. Right. You know, and you were like, well, even that, even before that, you, before you were hunting, you went on a couple hunts with me Yeah. just to sit there yeah. and see what it was like. Cause you, you were open-minded to it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you were, it was kind of like a tag along and me saying, okay, here's a deer stepped into the field here. Take my rifle and take a shot. Yeah. And that's how you got your first one. Yeah. And then, um, you really got into archery. Yeah. Which that's, that's, that's my thing. That's my, that's my, my bread and butter right there. I love archery more than anything. Yeah. And, um, you really got into it too. Yeah. And then you got your first Definitely. buck last year. Yep. Got my first buck with a bow. Um, so wonky little six point man. He he had a it was cool a lopsided. It was, it was cool. really cool. No, it was an awesome. It's it's a. I'll never forget it because of how unique it was. Right, right. Yeah. So this this was basically um, a typical beam on one side, but the other side, whether it's a genetic defect or it was an injury or something, but one side was just wonky, just weird, um, which is still a three on that side, right? But it was almost yep. just like a like a stub. It was very stubby. Yeah, it, had, it was, I don't know how to describe it. But what it, yeah. was cool about it, what I found neat about it was within a mile away was one of my family's properties. And that year before that is when the ice thawed in probably late March, you know, April, we had two deer float from the bottom of the pond or underneath the ice. They floated to the surface of the water and there was two bucks that were locked up. And... um my brother sent me a picture. He said, there's two buck, bucks in the pond. I instantly rushed down there and crawled in the water. And, you know, <laughs> I ended up cutting the heads off them and doing a European mount. But uh, the one, what's that? You called easy. I did call it easy. I did. I did. Yeah. I actually, I, I sent him a picture of it and I, uh, I asked him if I could, if I could uh, keep the horns and stuff. And they said, absolutely. So I did a European mount of the two, but the one, the that was locked up was identical to the one that you shot. Yeah. Even in size and everything, it looked like the exact same deer, the yeah. same side was messed up too, yeah. which made me think that it was a, gen a genetic defect on that hill. Yeah, um, really cool. I've never hunted that hill before. So usually when deer have one horn that's messed up, a lot of the time it's from injury, injury in velvet, or it could, it could be genetic, I yeah. assume. I, you know, don't quote me on that. I, I would assume. And yeah, but seeing to, that deer that you got to me, that's, this one, that's got to be genetic. Similar. It's that yeah. same patch of woods, yeah. and it was the same exact looking deer yeah. with the same stub on one side, and then the other side was perfect. Mm -hmm. But and so then later that season, I got a uh, my second buck, my second ever buck with a with a rifle. First rifle like, buck, though. Yeah, first mm -hmm. first rifle buck. Yep. yep. And uh, yeah, it was a. Barely an eight point. It was like a six with a couple little nubs. Yep. He counts as an eight, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was, it was a good season last year. Yep. Last year was the first time I was out kind of like on my own, doing my own thing. For but, deer, because the first, yeah. well, the first hunt that you got into um, was geese. Geese, yeah. I brought you with Paul, yep. goose hunting, and we jump shot a pond. And then you really enjoyed, the, you know, I've told you a lot of times, a lot of uh, people don't like geese they don't like eating it they don't like eating goose mm -hmm. they think it's horrible they think it's just garbage all the guys that i go goose hunting with they just grind it up and make sausage or jerky or something and they hate it but yeah. i was like nate listen if you know how to cook this properly this stuff's phenomenal yeah it's great and so we went out you shot that first bird i remember we drove up to my cabin up on the hill and breasted it out yep. or, and then came back here and i cooked it yeah and you took one bite and that was like you're, you're like, yeah, this is great. Well, so here's another um, piece of information about me. So I I went through like three or four years of... Uh... <laughs> you need a refill? It's a refill. <laughs> so um, I went through three or four years of, um, you know, I mean, shorthand, you could call it vegan. You I mean, know. I, I was eating... You know. Yeah, I was eating eggs and stuff, uh, but... Yeah, I was just kind of like 
I don't know. Just just went through a phase, we'll say. Well, and butter up a little bit, man. For for three or four years, you were <sighs> vegan. You called yourself I wasn't, vegan. Well, I've always said vegan as when like a When you were doing it, you were calling yourself vegan. As a convenience term. It was just like, it's easier to just say vegan. But I never really thought of myself as vegan. Eggs. I mean, I was eating eggs. Jeez. You know? Heavy. Right. So it wasn't right. technically. You're eating eggs from here mainly. Yeah, for, for only from you. It was just my eggs? Yeah, I got some from another friend a couple times, but yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that goose was the first meat that I had had in like four years, except right. for like a, a drunk a, chicken a wing. A drunk chicken wing is what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. was the one time they had a drunk chicken um, wing. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah, and then uh, you, you really got hooked on the goose hunting from that. You went out and got a blind and everything. And um, yep. We, I, I was born a whitetail hunter, um, and we did various other things like chasing after some pheasants and a little bit of predator hunting and things like that, but um, I was never that big into waterfall, and just because my dad was not that big into it. But then as I got into my adult life, I met some guys that are, you know, they really enjoy it, and so I, I really, I, I still am mainly whitetail, but I'll go out and do that with them. And these guys are diehard waterfall, yeah. diehard goose hunters, diehard duck hunters. And uh, I got Nate involved with them, and we all go out as a group, and that was a blast. Um, we, there, we've there we had some crazy times doing that. A lot, a, lot, of, a, a lot of fun. fun. It's, it's, it's completely it. different yeah. than deer hunting. Deer totally hunting, different. you're silent, you're alone, yeah. you're quiet, you're not yeah. talking or doing anything, watching every movement with duck or goose when you're in a layout blind. You just hang out with the guys mm-hmm. until and it's a rush when they come in. It's Yeah. Yeah, it's a rush. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I really enjoy it. So that's basically our background, you know, a quick little thing into it, look into our background. Um, but we can take a minute to talk to you guys about what Kanadi is, why we're starting it, um, what it means. And we'll tell you guys um, some cool background with it. Nate and I were sitting here one day in the cabin. Um, and like I said, we've been talking a while about wanting to start a brand, wanting yeah. to do this outdoors thing. Um, I was in the fitness industry for a long time. I had a clothing brand and stuff with that. I've always been about making brands and doing things that I was passionate about. And so since walking away from that, I really wanted to step into creating a brand for for the outdoors industry. And just brainstorming that with Nate, um, we figured Nate would be the perfect guy to involve with this since You know, whenever I'm hunting, you're basically always down to do it. Um, Anything outdoors with that. And then also your videography skills. Mm -hmm. And that's Nate's main, that's that's your only profession right now. That's what you do. That's, you know. It's what I do for a living. I run a media company, photography, videography, all that, so. Right. So we're sitting here and we're trying to come up with names. And we came up with a bunch of whatever names that we just weren't thrilled about. And I remember we were saying, once we know, we'll know. Yeah. Like, when something said, we'll know it. It'll just click. And then you said, Sycamore Outdoors. Yeah. There's a sycamore tree right outside my porch. Yeah. I love the sycamore trees we have here in upstate New York. Yeah. They're always on the creek banks and the rivers and stuff. And they're these massive, massive, giant white trees yeah. that are just outrageous. And we were like, oh, man, that's really good. I love that tree. That's a cool name. That sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And we were almost running with it. And we texted a couple people, and they were like, yeah, yeah, sounds all right. Yeah, okay. And then I remember we it wasn't quite just like it wasn't quite the nail in the coffin, Mm -hmm. but we were cool with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went on my phone. I started looking some things up, and this word Kanadi popped up. And I, I said, I, I called it Kanatai. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. I said Kanatai. And you were like, dude, I think it's Kanadi. And I was like, you're right. Yeah. That's what it is. And I read you the definition. Yeah. The definition of Kanadi is the guard, uh, the guardian of the hunt. Kanadi was in, in was it mythologically in, in the... Uh, in, Cherokee. In Cherokee. Yeah. He, it, it translates to lucky hunter. But Kanadi was the one who taught the people how to hunt, taught mm-hmm. the people how to live off the land, how to utilize the animal in all ways, how to be ethical, how to do everything right, and how to evenly distribute the, the meat to the people. Right. And it doesn't relate to being lucky at all because they say 
that he was often not lucky. And we related to that big time because <laughs> yeah. we put a lot of time into hunting, yeah. fishing, doing everything that we do. And yeah. you're often not lucky at all. Yeah. Most of the time, you're not lucky at all. Yeah. So we said Kanadi. And when we read that definition, we were like, that's exactly what we want this to be yeah it was spot on it just embodied the whole thing and that's right what we're away. talking about where when as soon as you happens, read the definition i was like yeah that's, that's no that's it, it. that's it yeah. that's it yeah. it sounds good um we looked it up realized that no one else was using it and we're like boom let's do this so basically if if you want to tell a little bit of like what our plan is with Kinect. yeah so um you know our our main plan a lot of a lot of what we want to do is um interview people and make short documentary style videos on all different kinds of people and how they live off the land. So whether that's a fisherman, a hunter, someone with a homestead, someone that keeps bees, I mean, you name it, just how people live off the land and why they do it. You know, right. I, I, I'm really curious to, to hear people's stories of you know, why, because this stuff, it's an investment of time. It's an investment of money. Yeah. And of all the hobbies you could have in the world, like why this, you know, well, and, and there's a lot of people out there with a, with a lot of different um, proclivities for different styles of living off the land. And so we want to interview people and make, make cool like films with that. A good uh, um, example of, of that is logically speaking, like why do we put so many hours of going out into the frigid cold, hoping a deer walks by? Mm -hmm. maybe getting a shot at it hopefully an ethical shot harvesting it and then all the work begins of packing it back home you know processing it butchering it freezing it cooking it not only that the money you spend on your license on your tags the money you yeah. spent on your weapon that you're using the money you spent on your gear that you're wearing on your tree stands on it just like at the end of the day you're spending thousands of dollars on this stuff right where imagine how much <laughs> go ahead sam crank your beer <laughs> imagine how much beef you could buy from the store yeah. for thousands of dollars yeah so like why why you know yeah. and that's that's just an example of like questions that we want to answer through the reasons of all these individual people and their stories of ways that you, they utilize the land. Mm -hmm. Like Nate said, a beekeeper. Like, why are you doing it? Just mm -hmm. what, what's your pet? Like, why are you going out and doing that? Not everyone's mm -hmm. doing that, so why are you doing it? And we're hoping to bring you guys some really, really cool in-depth videos that are not only educational, but also just pure entertainment. Nate's really good with the videography. Um, he has an eye for that. That's crazy. And not, you know, I found you might have a fresher mind with this because I've been hunting longer. I still appreciate every little thing. Like tonight I was in my stand and a big owl swooped down the swamp and landed next to me. And I was like, man, that's so cool. You know, yeah. things like that. People who aren't normalized to this lifestyle don't get to experience how many great views there are out there and how beautiful it is not far from home and just the tiniest little things that are just like magnificent so cool and our videos will show you things like that yeah. and everyone will be able to get an inside look of this lifestyle and we're going to get an inside look of this lifestyle of things that yeah. we have nothing we know nothing about yeah i'm excited for that part for so sure. We've got some really cool things planned with some people right here in the in the immediate future working on some videos and um, the the YouTube channel that we're doing. Um, I'm really excited about that. That's where you guys will find the full length videos. Um, on top of that, we've got some plans of doing some apparel, maybe some products, some things like that. Just things to just um, really enhance an outdoorsman's life too. Um, the pro the, the apparel is mainly just going to be for fun, you know, mm -hmm. just make cool shirts and stuff like that, that we can all wear. Um, we would love to get into doing some, some products and stuff. We don't, I mean, we've got some brainstorming ideas with that. Nothing's in the works with that yet, but the videos are their main thing right now. And uh, I think that's what we're most excited about Yeah, right now. Yeah. So. And, and there's just a, it's a thought I have in my, my head, just about our brand in general, you know, there's, there's guys that hunt 
who are just hunting to hang a pair of antlers on the wall. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not like what we're about. Like it's, it's something, it's something more than that. And I think, you know, if, if someone was to ask you and I, we might have slightly different answers, but the point is it's, it's deeper. There's something, there's yeah. something more there. And that's really like what we're trying to tap into with this brand is, is, is the why behind it in, in a why that's a little, a little different than just like, uh, like a nice mount up on the wall, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But I mean, there are, and we'll get into this in future episodes and stuff. There are definitely people who are motivated by the antlers and they're motivated about the trophy. Sure. Right. And they, there's people who see the meat as, you know, the icing. And there's people who see the antlers as the icing. Mm. And I think moving forward, we're going to find both types of people. And we'll probably have episodes and videos on both types of people. Mm. And we're just going to be able to better understand why it is that each type does what they do. Sure. You know? Yeah. Because I find myself smack dab in the middle of that. Yeah. Because why, why am I right now passing up deer after deer after deer? Deer that in the past I would never pass up. Yeah, you know, shooter bucks that I'm passing up because there's one specific buck that I want to target, and we'll talk about that later on. But you know, at the end of the day, there's people that'll do things like that, and there's people that are like, "I'm here to fill my freezer." First deer that walks by, here's an ethical, clean shot. It's legal. I've got a tag. Take it. And yeah. They're happy. They're as happy as I will be if I get my target buck. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm excited to learn the thought process behind both sides of that equation. Mm. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'd, there's something that's like viscerally exciting about seeing yeah. a big buck and going after oh, yeah. it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things to be said about that. I mean, we can go on that. That that's a debate that I think can go on for a long time. Sure. That we'll talk about definitely. I want to focus a whole episode on that. Yeah. But um, yeah, we basically just wanted to introduce ourselves tell you guys what there is coming and uh, what Kanadi is going to be about. And uh, we're really, really excited moving forward to show you guys what we have to offer. Yeah. We hope you join us for these future episodes. We got some guests that are going to be on here. I'm not sure if it's always going to be in the cabin. It might be for, for, for winter at least right now. Um, here in upstate New York, it, it gets pretty freaking cold. And uh, we probably only got about three or four weeks left until it's pretty pretty cold yeah. maybe we'll do an episode from the ice shanty that'd be cool yeah, that'd be yeah that'd be cool i like that we do uh we do some ice fishing we do everything up here and uh i think with this brand what i'm most excited about is uh getting to experience all the stuff that i know nothing about yeah like dude i want to find some turtle dude in florida i want to meet <laughs> turtle man in florida some guy that lives uh, off snap turtles yeah that's my yeah. goal but if any out there know Turtle Man, just send him, yeah. send us his contact. Get a hold of him. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks yeah. for listening to us. And uh, we hope we see you around.